Hey there, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I'm excited to share my post-production method for creating custom motion graphics templates with 2D, 3D animation. Just like in programming, one way to recognize that a code could use improvement is by minimizing repetition of steps. Similarly, using templates in your video projects can streamline your workflow by eliminating the need to repeat certain actions, such as copying properties and performing time-consuming tasks repeatedly. This not only makes your project cleaner, but also reduces rendering time, as templates leverage built-in tools within the software's ecosystem for greater efficiency. But enough philosophy, let's dive into application. For this demonstration, let's build similar templates, one for Final Cut Pro in this episode and another for Premiere in the next. The only difference might be adding an animated 3D object from Blender for the Final Cut Pro template as Apple Motion Final Cut Pro's template builder seamlessly integrates with 3D objects in USDZ format. Motion is the essential motion graphics template for Final Cut Pro templates and plugins, including effects plugins catering for Final Cut Pro users dedicated to the Mac OS like Final Cut Pro has been a part of the Apple ecosystem since 2004. Fun fact, did you know you can modify default templates in Motion from Final Cut Pro X? In the future, we might explore building templates slash plugins in the other categories, but today let's focus on creating a simple custom title template in Apple Motion. To begin with our Motion template for Final Cut Pro, first we export our 3D models from Blender, which one could build from scratch or download using online 3D asset platforms such as Sketchfab or TurboSquid or any other one that you know. I imagine that there will be a lot more soon with the advancements in AI tools. This process doesn't take too long depending on what you're looking for. In my experience, the most consuming aspect of any creative endeavor is finding the right inspiration and establishing a smooth workflow. Once you have your models ready and have them properly set according to your preferences, including adding your materials and modifying files, you can then begin exporting them by selecting each model. Go to File, Export, GLB slash GLTF 3D Format. I think it's also possible to export models in USDZ format directly from Blender. With time, you'll discover your favorite workflow. USDZ, the format we're targeting for this demo is the 3D model format used extensively for high quality 3D models and Apple Motion's chosen 3D model library asset format. However, I find the initial workflow most efficient. It allows for exporting specific details such as animation and other baked in attributes for conversion to USDZ format in another dedicated software while retaining the initial exported attributes. Once you select GLB slash GLTF format for exporting, you'll be taken to a window offering your options for what you want to be included in your export, including limiting your export to various options. For this demo, we're going with selected objects, which just means you only want to export the object you selected within the project. The default transform setting is usually fine as it is, and on the mesh option, be sure to click on apply modifiers, especially if you didn't already do so in your project. I think doing it this way though is a non-destructive way of maintaining the integrity of your models in case you need to change something later on. Also depending on the kind of modifier and anything else you added to it. Once you've selected your preferred location for exporting, you can go ahead and hit export. This usually never takes much time. Once you're done exporting assets, it's now time to convert your GLBs to USDZ format using a dedicated converter. For this demo, we'll utilize Apple's Reality Converter, which I believe also relies on dependencies from Xcode when I was installing. But yeah, you can check it out. Just have that at the back of your mind in case you run into any errors. Xcode is Apple's dedicated code text editor for the Apple ecosystem. Ensure everything is installed correctly and troubleshoot any potential issues as compatibility can vary based on your Mac model and OS. Assuming all is set, let's now open assets in Reality Converter and preview them. Here you can click and drag to ensure all properties from our Blender exports are successfully added. Rest assured that what you see here is what you'll get in your motion project after completing this process. Now right click on your selected model and export it to your preferred folder. We can now move on to motion. On motion, I'm going to opt for project setup since it allows flexibility to later convert to any other category, including title, generator, or effect. I'll set up a 1080p timeline, 25 frames per second, with a duration of 10 seconds. What's cool about these templates that you make with motion is that they are flexible in the sense that you can readjust them by stretching them or shrinking them, and the animation goes with that. So if you stretch it out a bit long, then the animation will be slower, and then if you shrink it down, 
the animation goes faster but if you want to keep the same speed of animation and stuff you can also do some tweaking whereby you adjust animation speed with rigs and all that but that's more advanced stuff so for now we'll just stick to the basics cool with our project timeline ready on motion let's start importing our models as we would any other media asset in most softwares in motions interface you can position items in 3d space don't forget to enable 3d option for groups if you want to organize assets in batches and move them around in 3d format depending on your project's needs for this demo we'll definitely be grouping items based on the type of effects we want to apply we'll also create a drop zone for including and editing media and aligning our items as we imagined or planned updates can always be made later on too so i'm going to show you one or two tricks that you could use for your animations in motion that should make things happen a lot faster if you go to your library and you click on behaviors they are basically built-in plugins that you can work with all you need to do is select the right one for whatever it is that you're trying to add animation to for this demo i went for the move which is something you find on the basic motion i had to just use it once and then i just copy and paste on the other ones and just adjust parameters to fit in properly now if you want to see what move looks like we click on inspector you can see the properties here some of them are like preset animation all I needed to do was adjust my parameter where I wanted to start so I wanted to start from here and then it goes to the original position and just that simple addition makes a huge difference as you can see it pulls in and then it sits if I want to do it using keyframes I need to go here and say if I come here I keyframe um, that position keyframe that position and then I come here and then I keyframe again you know and trying to make it smooth and all that just using one item here makes it all much more easier yeah I can actually select how I want it to behave say if I wanted to ease in accelerate you know so yeah simple tricks like that will definitely help save you time and get you done pretty fast with your animations and custom templates and stuff the only thing i keyframed on this one so rotation starts from there you can see the keyframe and it ends there if you want more detailed stuff you can let me know so maybe future episodes we can work with that awesome once satisfied with our animation and placement we'll begin publishing properties we want editable in final cut pro to do this we'll click the drop down on each property we want to make editable and select publish we can then preview and edit these properties in the expector section under the top layer called project. This edit will match our preferences when using the template in Final Cut X. Once satisfied, we can prepare for export. First, I'll convert this into a title, select a thumbnail file and save it. Upon saving, we'll be prompted to provide a name, category and theme, ensuring organization within Final Cut Pro. After publishing, we can close our project and move to Final Cut Pro X. In Final Cut Pro 10, after opening our project, we can navigate to the title and generator section and select the category we used. Our template, now available for use, will be the only one there since we created a specific category for it. We can then drag our template into our timeline, preferably on footage, and begin editing to our preference. For this demo, I'm going to replace the placeholder image, adjust the text, and tweak the background, taking advantage of the editable features like light, color, do also bear in mind that further adjustments can still be made in motion which are going to reflect in Final Cut Pro after a refreshment is done or refreshing of cache. This can be done maybe by restarting your software or depend on your settings so with time you learn the most efficient way practice makes perfect. Gigo advice build progressively and avoid destructive methods to preserve the integrity of your projects for future modifications and updates. Don't be afraid to push boundaries and pick up little things here and there and find your own way or workflow. By the way, if you're interested in owning your own custom template or collaborating on new projects, feel free to reach out by any of the handles you see on this channel or email. Also, any show of support is very much appreciated. What we're doing here is building synergy with concepts between the field of media and that of tech, making everything easier and more relatable with friendly topics and ideas. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also don't forget to hit that notification so that you're notified every time we got new content. That wraps it up for motion templates on Final Cut Pro. Stay tuned for the next episode on building motion templates for Premiere Pro using After Effects. Cheers.